Hello everybody, this is Classic David with yet another podcast and I'm here with Curtis, uh, a Canadian living in Japan. Hello Curtis. Hi David. So um, yeah, today we are doing it in a, very, in a little bit special time. We usually do every other Monday, but this time we are unable to meet up in the next Monday. So we decided to proceed to do it today. Uh, but the next podcast is still going to be as it would have been. So on 22nd of May, if that's if that's good for you, Curtis. Probably the day will be fine. Uh, the 22nd, just the time, I'm not 100% sure. Excellent. So today we're going to be talking like usually about the, all the updates. Uh, there is a lot of happening with the S&P 500. So we want to definitely talk about that as well. And then we have uh, a report that Curtis prepared for you, how we test. Uh, that report is going to be free for you to download as well. There is going to be a link in the description, so uh, you can um, you can actually uh, see it for yourself. And then I will bring you. I will talk a little bit about an altcoin that I picked for today, which is Cardano. So, do you want to start with Bitcoin, Curtis? Okay. Um... Yeah, so I guess the backdrop to Bitcoin is that uh, the stocks are selling off uh, again mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. So Thursday in the US, we had another sell-off. Um, and I think that's what's really triggered the Bitcoin sell-off as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked about them being correlated. And mm -hmm. um, we've had some major, major crashes, like 3% of the S&P was down yesterday. Um, so it's knocking on the Bitcoin. Um, we're at 365. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems to, you know, it's a risk, it's a risk investment, and people are trying to sell stocks to cover their margins, and they're also selling Bitcoin to cover their margins. So mm -hmm. um, the the general market sentiment is triggering a sell-off in Bitcoin, it seems. Um, we're at 36, so it looks like we're testing that that yellow line there, that 32. Your line, long. yes, <laughs> from the last time. Line, I don't know, <laughs> but um, um, the the question is, have we hit a bottom in stocks, or are we going further? If we're going further down in stocks, there's a a good argument that Bitcoin will will go lower as well. So that's Bitcoin. Some from what I can see, I looked just right now because yes, yesterday we had a like a. Four thousand dollar drop for Bitcoin yesterday mm -hmm. evening, actually, and I had a look today at what the leverage says. So whether people are uh, over leveraging again, or whether it has been wiped out, or what happened, and the results are alarming because from what I can see, people are adding to leverage. Okay, there is an argument that it might be partial, that it might be as well short, because right now, yes, the, we are majority shorting. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that's that's maybe true. That could be a very good thing, actually, if that's true. I don't know for a very, sure, very certain how much of the leverage that has been added is long or short, but either way, it means that the volatility is now going to be happening. Uh, so this month uh, should be volatile, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the volatility, because when you see high over leveraging, when, when is, there is a lot of leverage on the market comparing to the market cap, it's always volatility. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I just made a video like three days ago. I made a video that I don't think that we are going uh, to short squeeze, that we are rather going to go down in the upcoming future. And it looks like that's, that might be what's happening actually here. I made this red circle again, my red circles, <laughs> testing right. them out again, my predictions. So right. I made this red circle. Uh, this red circle would actually create, uh, would solve my problem of what I can see. It's an ascending wedge. I talked about this in my last video, but the ascending wedge is actually on weekly rather. So uh -huh. ascending wedge is right here. So. Uh, and I've been told by someone I highly respect, uh, a forensic analyst actually that I just uh, randomly met by chance and I keep in touch with him for somehow. Uh, he told me that uh, weekly he doesn't even look at the ascending wedges because the ascending wedges or descending wedges, the wedges, they work, but only within the same epoch. And on weekly, it usually spans across more epochs. So just bottom line that he 
what he's, he's suggesting that the the, the wedges work uh, like a clockwork only on uh, lower time frames like daily for instance right. and actually on right. daily interesting th 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 thing is that it looks like there is an actually descending wedge forming on the daily to be honest right uh, well, it looks so, like the uh, ascending wedge has already been broken, has it not? Uh, 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 no, it would have to go at least to your line to be broken. Okay. No, because the last no no because the last one was thirty four point three because the wicks also the tails the wicks also count. Uh, oh, you're counting the tails. Yeah, yeah, and but the the biggest it would actually totally it would totally break the ascending wedge that i can see on weekly if my red circle is revisited so i could actually sleep much better and that would a finally maybe really make people short more and just uh if if then short leverage would go up that would be all extremely bullish news as well but mm -hmm. fingers crossed uh, let's see what is actually gonna happen mm -hmm. But yes, the the over leverage is uh, the leverage is, is increasing, and we are shorting right now, so it might be short leverage. Uh, so volatility will probably remain. Now let's have a look at Ethereum. We should always do uh, these two one by side. Ethereum is holding pretty strong, and even on Bitcoin contract, I think it went up on Bitcoin contract. Oh no, this is Cardano. Excuse me. Oh yeah, it's going actually up on Bitcoin contract. So Ethereum relative to Bitcoin is strengthening? Ethereum, yes, and I'm very surprised. And also relative to Luxo is also strengthening. That's the other small mm -hmm. coin I was doing in the past analysis for. And I, I'm really surprised because the merge has been delayed. Announced, the announcement for delay has been, you know, a couple of months. And I was really thinking, the logic told me that, okay, like this is going to go down on these contracts and it's not happening. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Ethereum is holding strong. Mm -hmm. That's what I can say. Okay, so I, I know you want to talk about S&P 500, so let's go. Yeah, S&P is probably the go. big story, right? Mm -hmm. So so basically, um, last week, um, the market sold off on Thursday and Friday. Um, and that was the big sell. And then the big event this week was the Wednesday Fed meeting. So Jerome yeah. Paul okay. did speak. Mm -hmm. And... They did a 0.5 uh, increase on the Fed base rate, which was expected. Um, he seemed a little bit encouraging that they're not going to raise 0.75 anytime soon. They might do 0.5 again and then maybe 0.25. And the market liked it on Wednesday. They liked what he was saying, or at least it was a re relief rally. It was a very good day on Wednesday. I think it was up about 3%. But then yesterday, Thursday markets in the US crashed again. So we've had what we've had four out of the last five days have been pretty, pretty negative, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so stocks are, are really down. We're testing that 4000 level, mm -hmm. which was um, your red circle there, I guess, is, is your uh, sort of critical zone. I mean, we're getting uh, very close to that. There's a good chance we'll hit that. Uh, um, I made a red circle, let me see when, it was on 18th of, of April. Yeah, so oh, that no, was a good Oh no, 25th call. of April. Yeah. 25th of April, so so we were we were just here because it was before the market opened. This was the, our last podcast, this pod, and yeah, that's what I made. The right. Red circle here. So we're testing the bottoms again. Obviously, that's knocking on to... to the, the crypto prices as well. Um, uh, Amazon is down like 30%, 35%, I think. Um, Tesla fell again. Teladoc testing the lows again. Um, so there's a lot of very cheap tech stocks out there. But the thing is, are you brave enough to what they call catch a falling knife, right? Do you know that expression, catch a falling mm, knife? No, you're teaching it's me a, lots of expression. I'm very grateful um, for that. It's just a term that when stocks, when, when an asset's falling rapidly, mm -hmm. you don't want to try and catch it. You want to wait until, like if it's a knife falling, you let it stick into the ground and find uh -huh. the bottom and then you pick it up. You can okay. get burned if you try and catch it uh -huh. on the way down. It's just a figure of speech. So, <laughs> you know, the temptation is to say, like if you look at i don't know what you want to look at you could look at amazon tesla. I, i've just well, tesla, typed tesla see, tesla's still doing pretty well relative mm -hmm. to the market you can see but Agreed. i mean look at teladoc let's say go back to teladoc okay. as we talked about T T D O C. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we talked about this a while ago um yeah it was at what 
300. No, what was the uh, what was the peak there? 300 at the top. Oh uh, yeah, something about so, yeah, something. And about. it's at 35. <laughs> yeah, 90 percent. Yeah. So approximately. I mean, I thought it was a good buy at 50 or 60. It's half that now. So it's bottoming. To be there. honest, yeah. Even technically, I, mean, I would definitely technically, if I was going to try to 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 buy the dip, I would definitely buy 85, and I would be then shocked now. Yeah. That it went down another 60 percent from. Yeah. From the so, level. So the which... catching the knife reference is that you should still wait a bit more. Maybe we might have another. You know, we could have another 20, 30, 40, 50 percent drop. It's hard to believe. But it's already at hard to be levels. And the thing is, um, the people say, well, how could it go so low? That's clearly undervalued. Why aren't people buying it? But it, a lot of people are covering margin. They're, they have to raise cash. Mm -hmm. So you have people that are highly leveraged, and they will go bankrupt if they don't sell. So they're covering losses. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're selling Teladoc to cover um, Amazon. And they're selling Amazon to cover Tesla, et cetera. So, People get caught out. Um, people don't want to be selling te Teladoc at this price, but they're being forced to. And that's why it's an amazing opportunity to buy in crashes because you're getting absurd valuations, you know. Um, so uh, not financial advice, but it's getting super, super cheap. Well, yeah, like 90% for a company that has a positive revenue, right? They are making money. Is that they're still true? actually well they're not actually they don't make money because they spend okay. so much on marketing and growth okay. um but i think when you look at that you realize if they wanted to stop being a growth company and just make small amounts of profit they could they could cancel their marketing and grow slowly um so uh, in the same way that amazon never made profits right but kept growing and growing and growing and growing and growing mm -hmm. and became what it is right so um they spend a lot on marketing. If you took that marketing expense out, they would be profitable, but they're not profitable on, on currently. Um, but their well, growth Tesla is quite incredible. Tesla wasn't profitable in 2019 when you were buying in. Sorry? Tesla wasn't profitable in 2019 yeah. when you were buying in. I agree. It looked yeah. like they were going to bankrupt back then. Yeah, <laughs> except that sales were going up so fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, good point. So um, yeah, Teladoc, yeah, that's super, super cheap. 90% discount. And again, it's a market leader, right? It's not like a startup or it's it's not a, a penny stock. Mm -hmm. It you know, they have like 55 million customers paying them every month. Mm -hmm. Um and the market's growing. So uh but 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 it might get cheaper. So we'll yeah, see. After this level has been broken out, like yeah, it would be I would also be very scared. It looks like at the very moment. Okay, let me have a look on monthly, maybe, because monthly works even even this was such a good level even on monthly. This is like absolute shocking to me that it was broken out. Like from technical perspective, if I had my technical mentor here, what he would tell me that once such a obvious buy level is broken down, that he just stop losses that and exits and he just doesn't touch it. He just lets it be. Right. That's what well, it looks like the company is going bankrupt, right? Or something like that, which it's not. Oh, uh, yeah, actually. But if From that was an altcoin, you'd say, oh, there was an exit scam. Right? Yeah, that, yeah. Or if it was exactly. um, if it was something like uh, Ford Motor Company, it would say, oh, they just uh, they had a, you know, a, a missile hit their headquarters or something like yeah. that. Right. I mean, um, this so, level, just like yeah, this. It's no a good bounce. buy. Well, look at Amazon. Look at Amazon. OK, so. I mean, they have a, a monopoly on retail and look at what they're doing. So mm. the peak was what, 3,700? 3,600, yeah. This and is they're on at 23, so they're like a 33% discount, about a 30% discount, something like that. Yeah, I would uh, still wait though. I would still wait here. I would definitely, if yeah. I was going to buy the Amazon, I would wait for this level right Yeah, here. I agree. I saw that. So around 2,000, right? That baby. Um, there's rumors that Buffett and his team might be interested in Amazon, like in the same way they bought Apple when there was a big pullback and made tons of money on Apple, they might be looking at Amazon. So watch for that. If they do announce a major buy, um, it, the, the price will, will, will go back up likely. Um, but yeah, 2000 looks like a, so a perfect example of a falling knife, right? Why not uh -huh. wait? Why not wait and see?
Yeah, this um, is yeah. But you can't think of a company that has more dominance or potential than Amazon. Um, their pricing power is amazing, right? And, and so they, they don't have any competition. And yet you've got a 33% discount. If I was in, if, in a month, yeah. in a month, when was that? Or, you know, okay, 20%. That's true, you know, That's true yeah. that, yeah, for such a recently... highly, highly liquid company like Amazon, it's, uh, it's unusual. That is, right. Because even so the what last you're seeing year, here, when you're Tesla seeing was... people that were borrowing uh, their Amazon stock and now have to sell it, right? Like this is uh -huh. leverage. This is this is leverage being unwound. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, right? That has nothing to do with valuation. That has everything to do with leverage and unwinding, um, and margin calls. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, yeah, I, you pretty much said it all. I mean, yeah, I don't think I have much to add to the S&P 500. Um, I still stick to my red circle, but I would, I would uh, presume that the daily close is going to be in it. So, uh, I would think below 4,000 is very dangerous. It, there's a strong argument that it, it would hold 4,000, I think, uh, yeah, below because... that is because this is the there's, last the last year's may hold last year that, may there's a technical argument there's a we just had so much 16. we've had so much we're so far down since january we're down like 30 the markets are down what 20 30 25 30 percent since january mm. that's fairly fairly unusual um mm. for s p 500 it's down only 14 percent at the moment oh really at since, the moment mm -hmm. since oh really mm -hmm. huh. I heard larger numbers than that. Or oh, maybe I'm talking NASDAQ. NASDAQ. You, maybe NASDAQ or maybe some yeah. specific, some other stocks. Um, but I would even, I could imagine even a week below 4,000. I think that they might be, they might try to, to, to push it down a little bit just to scare, you know, scare people and maybe wipe some because there is a lot of stop loss hunting always going on everywhere in a traditional market, in a crypto into exchanges, you know, always mm -hmm. lots of stop loss huntings. And I could imagine that there are lots of stop losses are at 4,050, 4,055 or so. There's well lots of stop losses there. So I pretty imagine that, yes, these stop losses are going to be hunted. And so the close could be somewhere in my red circle. Let's see. Let's see, my last red circle that I had in uh, in the, uh, at the end of winter got only wicked. It, we never closed in it, so let's see if we close in this one. Now let's have a look at gold. And gold is coming into my buy level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dream buy yeah. level. Let's see if it's going to stop here. Let's see if I'm right that it's not going to go over because that would be my best guess. Right. It's actually going to start climbing from this... 1831 it's a slow yeah. chart so it's not much to say you want to say anything There's a guy to named uh, gareth soloway let me just pull up he um he's he's uh, yeah gareth soloway but he's also saying he will probably buy and go long with gold around that 1800 level um mm -hmm. if it gets there yeah i agree with this actually I think he said twenty five hundred dollar gold. Have the cash, right? Like at the moment, even if you earn ten percent, twenty percent, whatever. Um. So that was about gold. Now let's look, let's have a look at DXY. Really going higher and higher. DXY. Uh, last time we had a look, twenty fifth. Oh yeah, ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I haven't talked about this in our last podcast. Yes, that my actually my line uh it looks like it's going to be invalid. Yeah. Because this was a weekly line and the last weekly close was yeah, I think I can now delete it. it. <laughs> I can delete it actually. I can delete this one? line. The top oh, one. No, okay. <laughs> the bottom one was actually, as you can see, it was touched like two times, three times. Right. Because there is one green. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
there is one free time so my red line it actually th that one works but the other one so right. yeah this is actually pretty scary look stuff. It, it just went to 104 104 yeah it's a scary well, stuff well, this is what you've been telling me all the time as well that the uh, us dollar can go down versus goods and services but still can can go up on this index because just because the other fiat currencies in the basket might go down equally as much or even yeah. lower yeah so and as you know too like technical analysis will only gives you probabilities right it does yeah. like when you say an ascending channel uh, will typically fall, that's only 70% of the time or 80% of the time, right? There's 20% okay, where it although, goes the other way, right? So, um, you know, enough. you could, how do you price in the war in Ukraine? No one knew that was going to happen. That's a very unusual, that's a very much a black swan event, uh, you know, war in Europe. And then, um, you know, inflation finally hitting so high, we didn't know that was going to happen this year. Um, and uh, the big stock sell off. So, you know, that's why we're at 104. That all makes sense, but um, it's very hard. No one can predict that, right? Fair um, enough, but this is not over. It's not over at all. It just means that uh, we are actually going to make, we are making a new top ever since the last quote unquote cycle, because the last quote unquote, unquote bullish cycle ended in January 20, 2002, right. and it began in 2008 after the, right. uh, the, the, the bank crisis. Right. So I I thought uh, that there was that it it picked out that the bullish cycle is over since 2017 2016 but okay um, I was wrong there but right. it's not over there are three more levels and I honestly believe that it's going to stop at one of these or actually even two I'm going to just put two at one least is there should be some correction right whether that holds or not but there should be some that's quite a move that's right. that should be it's it, yeah maybe maybe this is actually like the acceleration if this was a normal chart i know this is uh, this is uh, this is a specific chart this is not a normal chart but this was this was a normal chart then i could speculate that this was going to be some kind of an acceleration at the peak of the bullish bubble or you know right. bullish cycle but anyway i just made these two and i'm gonna leave them here and this one i'm gonna make right. fat because this one i expect I consider this one fat line as the final, uh, final <laughs> resistance. Boss, final so boss. it has to be, it has to hold. So the US dollar has to uh, start going down, at, if not from the from the small line, from the fat line, because then right. it would scarily, scarily mean that there is a chance for a serious bull mode of uh, of a US dollar on this index at right. least. And I think. My well, again, it would be very you know, these um, if the US dollar gets too strong, it starts to affect their 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 exports. Right. So mm -hmm. they don't want it that strong. So they'll literally so they'll do something. They'll make a call yeah, 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 uh, yeah. with they'll talk to Japan and say, Japan, you have to raise your rates as well, because yeah, yeah. the US dollar is just getting too strong and it's not fair. <laughs> and then Japan will say, OK, but please don't let China invade us, right? So the the G7, G20 countries, the feds, they call each other and say, look, this just doesn't work. Um, the US dollar is so strong, we can't sell cars in, mm -hmm. in, you know, and so it's not fair. And if you want us to be an ally, we need you to raise your interest rates and then the Japanese yen will start appreciating, right? Um, and they do this all the time. So that's what will cause the reverse here. So um, bottom line, there are two still then we can yeah we're gonna be looking at these two lines and let's see what happens right but um if you look at jpy uh usd okay um sure it's worth looking at because um there we go you notice so <laughs> so look at oh so i had a, i had a circle here i don't know when since when i made this circle <laughs> i don't even remember so the look at how many one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten days of ten days of green candles since weeks, March seventh. Ten weeks. Sorry, ten weeks. That's uh -huh. even more powerful. Ten weeks of green. It was at what one fourteen, one twelve. It went to one thirty. So, again, we said the Japanese yen historically would strengthen in a U.S. stock crash because of the 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 carry trade. The 
Japanese investors will sell stocks and go back to the yen. It's not happening. And then the other thing is gold, right? Gold should be rising. It's not, it's not happening. So what's different this time? That's the most interesting thing to look at. Why is, you know, you know, why is the US dollar so strong vis-a-vis -vis yeah. the, the JPY or, or gold when it wasn't the case previously? Yeah. And despite all the money printing, remember the US printed like several trillion dollars in it during COVID. So they have not been phys fiscally um, responsible um, mm -hmm. for the last couple of years. But in the last couple of weeks, they said they raised the interest rates on the 10 year on, on the Fed rate, right? So that's what's happening, but yeah. crazy. That's crazy. The Try to compare time... that historically. How many times has that happened before? One, two, three, four, five, six, 10 okay. weeks straight. Okay, let me have a look. Oh, uh, so nope. something similar happened in it's 2016. Only seven. That's only okay, seven that's, weeks. You're very fastly you counted it. Very look at, okay, look at that one. one okay, two, this was a one chain Just here barely, in 2012. Yeah. Okay. But it was small, the candles, it was, you know. Yeah. So it's very rare it what lower, we're going through right now. Lover increase. This is a lot. This is less candles. Almost never. Almost that's never. That's true. This is, uh, you're making a history here. Well, yeah, it's it's a definitely an outlier. Making a history um, here, and the last time we spoke about the Japanese yen in like February, it was it was like uh, two months ago, right? Like it wasn't. I I don't remember what podcast it was, but I think it was like. February. Well, last time you and I talked about currencies, we did talk about the yen, but I don't know when you did this chart or when you did this. The circle, I don't remember either. Circle. Here, yeah, let's see if it's some if it holds or something. Let's see. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that was the X Y. Uh, is there anything else that we actually are covering? Not. I don't remember. I had... don't think so. I'm gonna leave the Cardano talk for the end of the podcast. So okay. uh, maybe I'm gonna give you the space right now for your uh, Howie test. Great. Okay, so um, let's go over the Howie test. Um, I thought this would be interesting to your listeners that are in crypto and um so uh there's a document here we're going to share david's going to share uh so basically the howey test uh, refers to the u.s supreme court case for determining whether a transaction qualifies as an investment contract and therefore would be considered a security and subject to disclosure and registration requirements under the securities act of 1933 under the Howey test, an investment contract exists if there's an investment of money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. Okay, so why this is important is um, the Howey test is determined by the SEC to decide whether a investment is legal or illegal. If it is illegal, they will ban it from being publicly traded. And we'll talk about the implications of that later. Um, uh, there's been some uh, cases in US law. XRP, I think, is still in a lawsuit. Um, there were rumors about Ethereum being um, uh, a security um, and therefore you know, raised money illegally. Um, and then, of course, the ICO craze of 2017, 18, 19, um, that was also the issue. So. Um, the Howey test is how they determine to uh, how they evaluate investments, whether that's crypto investments or any investment. And um, the SEC chairman has made statements saying they're not going to make an exception for crypto. They're not going to say, well, crypto is this special thing, so we're going to let people do what they want. So they've been quite consistent that um, crypto falls under the same categories as any other investment you would make, and it needs to... Um, pass their their review okay um so back to my document um if you see the list of criteria there's four criteria uh to mm -hmm. say something is a security okay number one it is an investment of money two there's an expectation of profits from the investment number three the investment of money is in a common enterprise meaning there's more than one people investing into this and number four any profit 
comes from the efforts of a third party or promoter, not by the actions of the investor, but rather the, the executive team or the marketing people or the salespeople in the project. So that's what they mean by a third party. If these four elements are found to be true, it is a security, okay? Now, if it's a security, you have to get registered. If you have to get, if you have not been registered, you've just launched an illegal investment. You've broken the law. You've broken U.S. law. Okay, so this is a big deal. Um, I'm not sure it's a big deal for crypto people, but it's a big deal for anyone uh, in government, of course, anyone running a publicly traded company like Coinbase, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anyone investing other people's money and putting their money into crypto through um, funds or ETFs or anything like that. So it's big news for people with big money. Um, and I think it's, it's not quite being factored in as a risk factor when people are investing in altcoins, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go back to the article. Uh, regarding cryptocurrencies, the operative question is whether or not cryptocurrency investors are participating in a speculative enterprise, quote unquote. And if so, if the profits those investors are hoping for are entirely dependent on the work of a third party. If the SEC determines that a particular crypto token is classified as a security, that brings up implications. Essentially, or effectively, it means the SEC can determine whether or not the token can be sold to US investors. So we're talking about US markets, US investors, US exchanges like Coinbase, and mm -hmm. whether that's legal or illegal, okay? and. Again, this is, this is a big issue. So the questions we need to look at, can a cryptocurrency survive if it can't be sold legally in the US, right? Um, if, if your coin is determined an illegal security, Coinbase can't sell it, in my mind. Coinbase would lose their license, okay? So if there's a coin on, on Coinbase that was determined to be an illegal security, in other words, it is a security and it was not registered as a security, uh, it would have to be removed from the exchanges, in my opinion. I'm not a lawyer, but that seems to be the case, right? Um, next question is, what percentage of crypto is bought or sold on US exchanges? Um, so someone might say, well, I live in Germany and I trade in Germany, so I don't care about US rulings. And that may be true. However, the US market affects the price of that currency, or sorry, of that coin globally, because liquidity would shrink. So even though your German exchange uh, may say this coin can be traded, the coin would be taken off of Binance US and Coinbase US, etc. So that's the issue is the, the total value or the total liquidity of the coin may be impacted negatively, even if you live in Germany or Japan or Thailand and don't care about US laws, okay? So that's my third question. I'm, I'm talking about the three questions at the bottom in bold, David. So mm -hmm. can a cryptocurrency survive? What percentage of crypto is bought and sold in US exchanges? And then if a coin loses this liquidity, what happens? Does that kill the coin? Does it cut its price in half? Or is there no effect? Um, can seems I to me it would have. It, it seems to me it would have an effect, yeah. So I would like to react here. So I think that we can make a picture of what the answer to these questions might be based on the XRP lawsuit. So the moment it got kicked out of the exchanges, it mm. got literally cut by minus 65% because right. as you're going to talk about, still the majority of the trading for crypto is in the US. But I right. think that in time, this is completely going to change. But yeah, this is today. So uh, yeah, it drastically uh, affects the price today. But however, also the likely the, the outcome of the XRP lawsuit, because it's still being dragged on and it is hopefully going to be resolved this year. And the outcome of that is going to tell us a lot about mm -hmm. uh, the, if the other cryptocurrencies are in danger. Yeah. Um, right. Although XRP could win and other coins could still lose, right? Okay. Um, so, but you're right. That's very, uh, let's just say if XRP loses, mm -hmm. the market's in trouble. 
then that's uh, that's a very bad news for all cryptos. That's true. If XRP wins, okay, there it could still be that some other coins. I'm just trying to make but, your your yeah. audience aware and just be cautious and 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 just include this in their calculations, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't own alts. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying it's legit. Um, again, crypto traders tend to be younger people. Uh, they, they kind of have an anti-government opinion in a sense. That's what crypto is about, right? It's about anti-fiat, anti-regulation. But I don't think they quite understand how strong the SEC is and how much of a stranglehold they have on the exchanges. So um, the... The SEC would go after Coinbase. They wouldn't go after the coin necessarily. They would say to Coinbase, you can't trade this. And Coinbase would be forced to either agree or lose their license and go out of business. So obviously Coinbase can't fight the SEC, right? Yeah. So um, maybe the founders of the coin are, are not going to go to jail. Maybe the coin can still trade all over the world, but it won't be on Coinbase anymore. And um, so... Let's go to the next page. Um, I just did some really basic market data. Um, mm -hmm. the, sorry. Um, so um, yeah, ICO launched coins are at risk. So in particular, Bitcoin is not going to be determined to be a security. Okay, they've already said that. Um, Bitcoin was um, was just basically given away. It, it grew organically. Um, there was no mm -hmm. head of marketing. There was no pre-sale. There was no pre-mine. Um, except for Satoshi's coins, who he didn't even exist, and he just held them. He still held them. So Bitcoin is safe from this analysis, which is huge. Um, other than Bitcoin, every coin is vulnerable. Uh, probably the next coin that's probably safe is Ethereum. I believe you've you've heard some rumors that Ethereum is not a security, although they did have an ICO in 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Ethereum has also been the platform for all the ICOs. So most ICOs were ERC-20 tokens launched on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's been a key part of the, you can see there, there's 800 ICOs uh, raising about $20 billion. Um, most of them failed. Most investors lost all of their money. Okay. Well, there was a craze. There was an ICO craze, yes, in the late 2017, early 2018. Mark Cuban, yeah. uh, he was investing into, into it. Yeah. Yeah, he admitted. So, I mean, it's classic. This is what the SEC's job is, is to protect against investments. It's it's exactly what they're hired to do, right? Um, I don't. I didn't get a, maybe next we could have a, a full list of all the ICO coins. Um, I, I just looked, I mean, I don't have a list of that, but like Tezos was, Brave was, Civic mm -hmm. was. Um, so there's many that were. I, uh, Ethereum, by most accounts, is a security, and it would have been a, an illegal security. They'll probably get away with it, I'd guess, because there's so many investors involved with it, and it's become such an institutional uh, favorite that uh, Ethereum they may just let it go. I have no idea. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not in this space, but it's it's something to think about. Yeah. Um, so going to the third page, you can see we can answer some of these questions. Um, yeah, at the top. Yeah. So um, you could say, I don't care about the US. Well, 50% of trading is done in the US. Current. 50% of volume. It was 50. in 2019, though, the, yeah. the okay. information. Okay, let's say it's 30%, Let's, which yeah, is yeah. not. It's, it's still a majority. Good. It's the majority. You can settle on that, yeah. Yeah. And then the next one, one of two active users are on Coinbase. So again, maybe it's not like that anymore, wow. but it's massive, massive. Hmm. And surprising. remember, um, like a lot of rich people are, are in America as well. So as the crypto users grow, there will be disproportionately more Americans in the mix. Um, they have a lot of the money. They have a lot of the big funds in the same way that the U.S. stock market is dominant. Um, U.S. investors, you okay. know, what, 20% 20, 20 of the world's wealth is in America. So I, I want to react on this. Yeah, I want to react on this. If sure. the U.S. continues being unfriendly towards crypto, which it will, uh, it's going to actually make a change in this. It's going to make a shift. Uh, lots of people, lots of firms that that uh, blockchain based firms are going to leave the jurisdiction. Lots of uh, projects are going to rebase. Lots of people are going to migrate uh, from the U.S. as well. And also, uh, it's just uh, the majority of the trading is going to be happening in the friendly jurisdictions. It's not going to be Europe either. 
it's you're it's saying if the, if this howie test comes in or, or i mean it seems to me the us what is it's getting more and more pro crypto is it not oh do you do you feel that i don't feel well that way. <laughs> um so i mean uh coinbase is now uh went ipo last year right uh -huh. it's on the stock market uh there's miners on the us stock market like hud eight um they are uh, the, well, the North America, right? The Canadian government approved a, a, a Bitcoin ETF that's now held in pension funds. Um, you've got Goldman Sachs and all these big players saying they're pro crypto now. Um, American billionaires own it. It's on the books of MicroStrategy. It's on the books of Tesla. Um, I think it's uh, Deloitte now offers uh, crypto consulting for to put crypto on your or bitcoin on your balance sheets so uh, maybe not all coins so much but it seems like uh the us is allowing it to come in they're just regulating it um so i'm just i don't know i don't know which countries obviously small countries are maybe maybe portugal's more pro crypto than the us I mean, uh, fundamentally, cryptos are against the centralized government. So all the superpowers are going to be are right. going to be uh, not friendly. Uh, yeah. Russia is being opened right now. It's opening itself. Uh, that's right. uh, surprising. Let's see what that happens. Let's see the next right. year or year after. Let's see what right. happens. But so developing countries, that's going to be where all the crypto is going to be, where the trading yeah. is going to be happening the most where it's going to be used the most, that's going to help the most. That's, uh, so that's I would agree that there'll be a trend for Africa. that. But remember, yeah. but the rich people are still in Western Europe and North Today. America. Right? Today, yeah. Yeah, so in 20, 30 years, maybe you see a trend out. But currently, the, the Western governments have a lot. They, have the, they, they own the passports of their citizens and they tax them and they regulate them. So yeah, okay, 20, 30 years from now, maybe, I guess I'm speaking of like in the next 24 months that there could be this impact, right? Um, mm -hmm. Of the Howie test or regulation. Mm -hmm. um, but um, no doubt, no doubt, especially on the personal tax level, David, if, if, yeah. if, um, if you're getting taxed 50% on your crypto in America and Germany will let you have it for uh, doesn't charge you anything uh -huh. in Portugal. Or, Portugal obviously there will be migration but oh, yeah. that's a very and slow process and and um rich Americans are probably not allevi leaving America too soon um maybe not uh, there's families there so it's a slow process but um but I, I agree with you that yeah. I, I agree with you that uh, should this come to pass and should other cryptos have legal issues and be kicked off the US exchanges it, it is going to be then a cataclysmic, cataclysmic uh, crash of the altcoin market in that case and uh, uh, Bitcoin dominance is going to then uh, climb uh, once again uh, slightly high like uh, right. so I agree with you this that there is going to be the, that shock but that is going to be not that long lived and it's gonna you know uh, it's going mm. to recover but right. yes at first I agree with the shock Right. And it would encourage this. So the, the yeah, you're right. The more America would enforce something like the Howey test, the more it would push crypto development into non-American Of course, American, it's happening. Um, it's happening jurisdictions, today, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So one would trigger that. Okay. And then below there's a link. Well, it's just a visualization with the bubbles of North America, Europe, Japan. Um, yeah. Uh, and then there's a link below if anyone wants to read more, but there's, there's, there's some information. And I've got conclusions. Um, did I write something under that? No, that's it. That's my conclusions. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're going to so tell I talk, Yeah. So, you know, so it's definitely something to know. You should know about it. I'm not saying I can predict what's going to happen. It could be the SEC says, look, we don't want to disrupt um, innovation and we're just going to give everyone a pass. But I don't think that's what they get paid to do. Someone's going to get the hammer, whether that's XRP or another coin, someone's going to get hammered on this. And all they're going to say is, look, you have to register and pass our process to become a security and be legally traded. And we're protecting investors. And we don't care about whether you think that's authoritarian or not. It's our country and uh, our government. And we don't care about your opinion. So that's typically what happens, right? So um, you can't ignore the North American market. No, no. Uh, Even if you no. hate it. For the moment, no, you can't. Right. 
So that's all I had on that. I, we can oh, talk about it more if, if anyone has any questions. But yeah, we're looking. We're looking to what Harvey is gonna say. He was actually the one who uh, who forwarded us to this direction to the how we test some time okay. ago, a couple of weeks ago. Right. I think in one of his comments. So thank you, Harvey, again. And I think that is going to be time to wrap this up. But before we do, I want to talk to you about Cardano a little bit. So, Curtis, what do you know about Cardano? What do you think about it? Um, I know the owner, the founders that, what's his name? Charles, Charles Hodgkin. Hodgkinson. Yeah. Hodgkinson. I know he has a mixed reputation. Um, <laughs> Say at least. I mean, the Bitcoin maximalists hate him, of course. But, uh, um, <laughs> and I know he jumped in and out of projects and... Cardano was sort of mostly just promises and then it became something real and and it's had it's had its run up. Mm -hmm. um, it's not looking good right now. <laughs> it's below its 2018 levels now. Uh, it's below its 2018 peak. Yeah. Um, so it's had a massive sell off. What is that 90%? It definitely did. I mean, it's so dis uh... I mean, people there's so many people so get far. burned in this business, right? 75%. 75%. <laughs> and it, as little as, what was that? When was the peak? September? Uh, beginning of September 2021. Yeah, right. So people have just been s destroyed. Yeah, because most of the people bought here. I remember that craze. I remember the people in forums saying only two more places to go because Cardano was ranked number three in the, yeah. in the ladder. So right yeah. here, people are saying, okay, two more, two more places to go. Right now, they're saying, okay, 10, 10 more places to drop, maybe, because today Cardano is like number 10, I believe. Yeah, so I don't really have an and opinion on my... it. Okay. Um, when things are skyrocketing, everyone wants a piece of it. And um, when it's falling, people are, are crying in their beer. There are a couple of reasons that why I chose Cardano to talk about. So uh, the reason number one is because I was in the community and I Cardano is quite bipolar. There is uh, a part of the world that loves it, that just, you know, goes around forums and just says like how, what a brilliant project with a brilliant CEO it is. Yeah. And there is then other part of the people who can't stand it and who just uh, openly criticize every day just by default, like uh, kind of a haters actually. And there are lots of influencers that are kind of haters as well of Cardano by default, which is most likely caused just because of the amount of people that are on the other hand shilling Cardano and everywhere they go. Because when uh, the group of people is roaming the forums and just um, uh, pr in principle, in, in, in principle, just uh, shill something or someone, it usually tends to have the other effect that then sure. people get just annoyed just too much. And that's what actually happened with Cardano. People either love it or are really annoyed by it. Yeah. And I managed to understand both sides of the spectrum. I was in Cardano, so I also part of me loves it. And uh, over the past year, I also managed to understand the other side of the spectrum. And also I understand why the people, why the haters say what they do. And they, they do what they do. Right. Uh, what I think is uh, generally, um, uh, so I hope to have some kind of an unbiased perspective uh, on Cardano more than the others. Generally, what I think that Cardano has a major role to play in the world and continue to have a major role to play in the world in the even upcoming battle with the as well battle for the uh, for the dominance like like uh, you know we've created crypto to to mm, not to be enslaved by the uh, by the system anymore and by the entities of the system that are manipulating it and of course that system is not going to go down without a fight so there is still we don't know what's really coming this decade but whatever it is it's not going to be easy it's not going to be without uh, you know the dragon is not going to go down without a fight i know that saying yeah. I understand that one, and that's exactly what uh, what I expect. And I think Cardano has a major role in all this somehow, somewhat. Uh, I ha I think Charles might have a role in all this somehow, somewhat. Uh, I uh, I think uh, Cardano is going to get done. It's still not finished. It's still it might be still like two years to get fully done. Right. Uh, and uh, another reason why I chose to talk about it right now 
is because I think technically, technically there is actually, I have to hire this one. Technically, I see a beautiful trade in Cardano, actually. Uh, I think that we are going to have soon, uh, we already, even, even you don't have to try to catch the bottom. Even if you buy in right now, like you are 75% down from the top. Even yeah. if you buy in right now from technically, like it's not a disaster at all. You can, you can wait a little bit lower, but trying to catch the bottom or top, you should leave that to the gamblers, right? That's what they usually say. And right. my, my sell point, what I think is very beautiful, untested weekly level is below just short of $2. And even from where we are right now, even if you buy in today, it's a beautiful, I mean, it's actually staggering, 150%. And right. I think right now, sentimentally, people are very depressed. People are completely like everybody, even Cardano community. That's what you love to see if you want to do a long trade, that this is what you want to see. Right. Uh, Cardano is just uh, at the tail of ten of top 10 or okay maybe not that the tail is, is on the ninth place at the moment but it was number three and uh, everybody kind of uh, uh, written it off uh, right now cardano and the activity the active addresses uh i don't have that uh, at the very moment on hand but the last time i looked it looked pretty solid like it's not like the uh, ecosystem is dying not by far it was just overhyped this is not because the project is dying. This is just because it was overhyped and it was overhyped. It was very obvious last year by the number of people. And also when you see something like this, you just know that there is just big trouble in the future for the project. When you see uh, just pump without any retests. Right. So that's also my point that technically there is a trade that makes more than a sense. It could be actually extremely beautiful. And uh, uh, to earn 150% on a highly liquid coin, because you take lesser risks with highly liquid coins. Cardano right. is a value, uh, the, has a cap of 25 billion, it's very highly liquid. Yeah. So that's an unusual opportunity. That's my point here. Was it an ICO? Hmm? Was Cardano an ICO? Uh, yes. So it could be yes, you <laughs> as a security, to... <laughs> yes. But uh, in yeah, yeah. Should that happen, then we're you know I will tell you guys. Should that happen in the future? Remember then, classic. Remember what classic David told you. Should that happen? Yeah, they did a token sale in 2016. It looks like. And they had a website and a white paper. I'm not picking on Cardano. I'm just curious because it fits, right? So they did have a token sale. So Should that ever happen? Then remember Classic David, what Classic David told you that around 10, that are around 10 cents or below 10 cents, that's actually when you want to, if you want to huddle, that's some, that's a, that would be the, the, the level on which you can actually go in and huddle 10 cents and stake and huddle and use and vote and stuff like that if that ever happens what just Curtis just mentioned but Ian, Ian, yes cardano is in the category of the potential targets yes right right i wonder if they know that <laughs> Uh, I think Charles Order. knows. They must, right? He's, yeah. he should know. Charles knows. He indicated as well that there is always another. There is there is lots of uh, alternative plans. Even if he dies, what's going to happen? There is a sure. plan for that. If this is a if if SEC uh, sees it, what happens? They have a plan for that. There is multiple solutions. Then leaving the jurisdiction being the most obvious one. So uh, this is it's time to wrap this up. We've been going on for over an hour. And uh, is there anything else, Curtis, you want to uh, say? No, it's just very interesting. Every day the the markets are quite interesting. There's some big opportunities. If people have oh yeah, if people have oh guts, my gosh, buy. Um, oh yeah, even Cardano is not that it's it's not easy right now to buy Cardano, right? It's no, not it's easy not. when you see it like this. So that's a, that's a good thing. That are now well, in both in market and in crypto. I yeah. completely agree with you. What's there that are expression? some opportunities. 
that won't repeat. What's, the, what's so the expression? People get wealthy in bull markets, but they get rich in bear markets. Have you heard that? Expression? <laughs> Never heard that. No. What that? Just you understand makes the meaning so much of that? Sense. It yeah, makes right? sense. Well, yeah. um, even yesterday, I was having coffee with a guy yesterday, and he said, "Oh, I wish I'd bought Bitcoin at thirty-five hundred. And I was like, nobody wanted to buy Bitcoin at thirty-five hundred. That's the point, right? People thought it was going to a thousand. People were panicking. Oh, oh yeah. that's why the price went so low. Corona. So only in hindsight. So. Oh my gosh. Right. So I mean, the prices right now on look at Teladoc, look at Amazon, look at Cardano, look at all these things. They're they're really discounted, but nobody wants them because yes. they're afraid, right? <laughs> um, exactly. So the thing is, when do, when do we know the bottom is hit? And then do you have cash to buy that? Most people, their cash is still stuck in the buys from a year ago and they oh, never yeah. sold, so they're underwater. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a lesson for investors, right? You have to sell the highs so you can buy the bottoms. Otherwise, you ride it all the way down. And I'm just as bad as anyone else to hold all the way through. But of course, selling it's at high. highs is has two advantages one is you you actualize the gains it also gives you a chance to buy if you catch a crash right and now is a great time to be buying a lot of different products right stocks um you know gold perhaps there's a lot of things at a discount um but if you, all your cash is locked up in uh your old investments and you never sold you, you don't have any liquidity to buy yeah um, that's why Teladoc is, is such a discount. No one has the cash to buy that or rather the courage, but, um, some of it's, there's no cash because everyone's underwater. So, so we'll see. Okay. So what about the next uh, podcast? Is there a topic that you want to talk about? Uh, let me think about it. The market's interesting enough, I think, without a special topic. Um, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks with U.S. stocks. Um, if there's any questions from your listeners, topic suggestions, yeah, uh, that that would be another good source. You can um, have a go otherwise, on. I'll come up with something. If you don't, then I, I think that we mentioned AI like two weeks ago. That that might be something oh. interesting to talk about. I can bring an altcoin that is uh, AI focused as well. Just generally, and what? Just understanding AI and how it impacts there is some some uh, some fear some existential fears connected to ai there is some benefits some massive benefits of an ai maybe maybe that's an actually good topic to talk about sure so let's see if we get some better suggestions and we'll see each other in roughly two weeks time thanks david thanks all again and see you again <laughs>